Hi guys! Welcome to the next Shakespeare video. Um, we're going to continue where we left off. So if you would remember, we left off where um, Viola just started working for Orsino and is pretending to be a man um, named Cesario, okay? And uh, the Duke Orsino just asked her to go to his love, who does not love him back, her name is Olivia, and to ask, and not to ask, sorry, but to just tell Olivia that he loves her, um, which she already knows, right? She just doesn't return the love. So let's see how this goes. So this is um, Viola's slash Cesario's first time meeting Olivia, okay? Olivia listlessly wandered through her palace, mourning her brother. So remember, Olivia's brother died. Um, and so because her brother died and she was very close with him, she just doesn't want to be in love with anyone right now. So I don't think it has anything to do with Orsino, um, but I'm not positive yet. Um, I think she just doesn't want to be in love with anyone. She's just very sad about her brother. Um, and remember, um, our main character, Viola slash Cesario, lost her own brother in the shipwreck in the beginning of the story, right? His name is Sebastian, and, um, he died too. So both Viola and Olivia have lost their brothers, so they have that, that in common. But um, Viola is going to Olivia's um, as Cesario, so she's disguised herself as a boy, so Olivia is going to think that Viola is a boy, okay? Um, her self-important steward, Malvolio, strutted behind her like a rooster guarding a hen. Oh, so I think we need to draw Malvolio now. now. So yes, Malvolio is Olivia's steward, okay? So we're going to draw him down here. Where can we squeeze him? Hmm, who else are we drawing later? Hmm. I think we're going to draw him Let's draw him underneath Olivia, okay? So we are going to draw Malvo Malvolio, Malvolio. Which, if you know in Spanish, mal means bad. So this could not be good. Um, his face is skinny. Oh my god, he's huge. Oh. oh my gosh, it's just not happening today. All right, oh well, this is what is happening. So, hmm. We'll give him blue eyes. Um, oh, it's pink. Oh, I thought I had orange for a second. Oh man. Hmm. Oh, that's a big nose. <laughs> okay. I don't know why he's so happy. I kind of want to give him black hair. Okay, maybe we'll just give him brown hair again like everybody else. Okay, but we'll make it... We'll make it wavy, okay? Okay, what interesting hair he has. Uh, oh, and he needs some eyebrows. That's very thick eyebrows. All right, well, that's gonna have to do. Okay, so this is Malvolio. 
Okay. And you spell his name Mal or Mal. Okay, so M A L. M A L V. I lost my spot. V O L I O. So Malvolio. And what is he again? He is Olivia Stewart. Okay. And we're about to draw someone else in a second, too, but I'll wait. Um, okay, so her self-important steward, Malvolio, strutted behind her like a rooster guarding a hen. Uh, so Malvolio is protecting her, I guess. Malvolio pecked at anyone who came near, especially Olivia's uncle, Sir Toby Belch, whose drunken requests for money were always ill-timed. So that means... It was not a good time to ask for money, um, but he was always asking for money. So now let's draw Sir Toby Belch, Olivia's uncle. Okay, and I'll draw him right next to her. I guess he'll just have a weirdly shaped face like everybody else. <laughs> it's so awkward. Oh my god, it's like not even at all. Alright, at least that's a little better, maybe. Okay, um, so we'll give him brown eyes too, to match her, I suppose. And... Um... He's going to have kind of like a drunken smile because he's drunk. And we'll give him um, the gray hair. Okay, so he'll... He looks very old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe we'll give him a little mustache. Mm, no, maybe he's fine. I want to give Malvolio a little mustache, actually. He seems sneaky. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Okay. So this is... Um... Sir Toby Belch. Sir is spelled S-I-R. Toby is T-O-B-Y. And then Belch, which is like another word for burp. Um, B-E-L-C-H. Um, and then we're going to put Olivia's uncle. Olivia... Okay, and we will draw a line between them, since they are related, okay, um, okay, alright, let's continue. Is that everybody? Oh no, I have to draw one more person. All right, well, let me read this sentence. So, Sir Toby Belch, um, Olivia's uncle, whose drunken requests for money were always ill-timed, so he was always asking for money, right? Um, Sir Toby usually had his ridiculous but rich friend, Sir Andrew Aguacheek, in tow. 
that right? Agua Cheek? Okay. Agua Cheek did his clumsy best to woo Olivia whenever he got to see her, which wasn't often. So we're now going to draw Sir what, Agua Cheek? Sir, Sir Andrew Agua Cheek, who is um, Sir Toby Belch's best friend and someone who's trying to get with Olivia. So we'll draw him here. Okay. Maybe we'll draw a little... Little, uh... I don't know, what would make him seem drunk? Should we give him bags under his eyes? <gasps> and some... <laughs> some little squiggles? Okay. That just means he's a little woozy. Okay, he's not in his right mind. All right, so we're drawing the next dude. And this dude will have red hair, because why not? We'll make it curly. And, uh, we're good on time. Okay, and we'll give him some brown eyes. And We're going to give him a little mustache. And maybe we'll give uh, Sir Toby a little goatee thing. Something. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Let's see. Um, and what's this? I always forget this guy's name. It's kind of long, you guys. Let's see. Oh. All right. Sir Andrew Aguacheek. <laughs> well, what a name. Okay. So, Sir Andrew. Oh, it's not going to fit there. Okay. Ag. So, Sir Andrew, you guys should know how to spell, okay? Aqua Cheek, A G U E. Then Cheek, C H E E K. I'm gonna rewrite this a little better. Sir Andrew. And what is Sir Andrew again? So, they're best friends, okay, they're friends, and he's Olivia's suitor, which means he's, he wants to marry Olivia. So, does he love her though? Uh, we'll just put hearts. He's like, attempting. Okay. Okay, so he's, that's an ugly heart. So he's trying to woo Olivia. He's trying to get her to love him. Okay, um, all right. So let us continue. Uh, we're only gonna continue for a bit more. 
All right. The last thing Olivia wanted was yet another love poem from the persistent Orsino, but when Cesario arrived, he was so witty that Olivia relented and ordered a servant to usher in the boy. So, Olivia doesn't want any love poems from, from Orsino, right, because she doesn't love him. But when Viola slash Cesario showed up um, for Orsino, and he was or she, right? It's actually Viola. So she was so witty, meaning smart and nice, I guess, probably, that Olivia said, okay, you can come in. That's fine. Um, she and her waiting woman would play a little game with this cheeky youth. So I think um, Olivia likes Cesario quite a lot. Cesario entered Olivia's chamber and found six women covered in veils waiting for him. Him, not really him, right? Viola's a, a, a girl, but Cesario, she, he, she is dressed as Cesario, as a boy, right? Um, this page, the page had no idea which one was the countess. Cesario eyed the veiled women nervously. They hooted with laughter. The honorable lady of the house, which is she? Cesario asked. Speak to me, I shall answer for her, said Olivia, still disguised. So, um... So Cesario slash Olivia doesn't know which one is Olivia because they've never actually met before. So she's having trouble guessing which is the the right person. Give me assurance that you be the lady of the house, Cesario said. I would be loath to cast away my speech for it is excellently well, well penned. So uh, Cesario slash Viola is saying, I don't want to throw away my, my speech because it's very well written. Um... Are you a comedian? asked o Olivia. No, answered Cesario, but I am not what I play. Meaning, she's saying she's not a comedian, but she is not who she seems to be. Which is true, right? She's not Cesario, a boy. She's actually Viola, a girl. Cesario and Olivia bantered back and forth. The countess found herself drawn to the young page. She ordered her waiting, wa wa waiting women, oh my goodness, to leave her alone with him. When Cesario asked her to lift her veil, she did so. The youth was awestruck by the countess's beauty. Cesario could see why Duke Orsino was so smitten. So she understands why Orsino loves Olivia, because she's so beautiful. Cesario decided to take a more direct approach. My lord and master loves you, the page told the countess. So Viola just told Olivia, my lord, the Duke Orsino, loves you. Olivia stood up uh, abruptly, a signal that the audience was over. Your lord, does, your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. So she's telling, Olivia's telling Viola that Orsino already knows that she doesn't love him back. And he needs to, to just move on. Um, farewell, fair cruelty, Cesario bowed. Yet if I did love you with my master's flame... With such a suffering, Cesario's voice trailed off. So she's saying, Viola is saying, if I loved you as much as my master, um, what's his name, Orsino loves you, um, I would suffer so much because you're so beautiful. Though disguised as a boy, Viola still had the feelings of a woman. She realized that she loved Orsino and empathized with how deeply Orsino loved Olivia. So, Viola isn't saying that she loves um, Olivia. Viola is realizing that she loves Orsino and she feels really bad that he loves someone who doesn't love her back because that's how she's feeling. She loves Orsino and Orsino doesn't love her back because he loves Olivia who doesn't love him back. So, it's a huge love triangle. So, let's draw some hearts real quick and then I think we're going to end. Okay, so Viola realizes... She loves the Duke. Okay. She loves the Duke now. The Duke loves Olivia. And... I guess we're gonna, okay, we're gonna finish this little passage.
because I don't, oh, never mind. 20 minutes. Okay, we're going to end here. Bye, guys. See you next time.